Welcome in to this Big Ten today, presented by Gatorade on this Monday. Dave Revson, Rafael Davis, six days from now. <laughs> six days from now, we will have a Big Ten tourney bracket. It's hard yeah. to believe. And we just found out we, a coach share of the Big Ten championship. Shout out to Purdue, shout out to Coach Painter, and shout out to Coach Hoiberg at Nebraska. Because last season, bottom of the Big Ten, two seasons ago, last place in the Big Ten. Now these guys have a chance to have a double buy in the Big Ten, and that is big time going into the Big Ten tournament. And I feel like almost certain to be dancing in yes. the NCAA yes. tournament for the first time in a decade. It's a really cool story. Let's dive into our big story. It is the weekend that was in the Big Ten. All 14 teams played, so bear with us here. We're going to run through it. We'll start with yesterday. Truthfully, these were not the biggest games of the weekend as a whole, but some interesting results highlighted by Nebraska's win over Rutgers we were talking about. They have won five of their last six now. Ohio State continuing its strong play under Jake Diebler. Fourth win in five games. They pounded Michigan. And Indiana's won two straight. Road win over Maryland behind 24 for Mackenzie Imbaco. Most of the top of the conference, though, was in action on Saturday. Illinois won at Wisconsin. Marcus Damask, 31. Zach Eady, 32 and 11. Purdue, as Rafael said, clinching at least a share of the conference crown, holding off Michigan State. Iowa continues its late-season surge. They handed shorthanded Northwestern its first conference home loss, and Minnesota rallying from 23 down to top Penn State. So let's dive into some of these bigger games. I had a front-row seat, was uh, privileged enough to call Illinois against Wisconsin. These offenses, uh, particularly Illinois, is just phenomenal. They eclipsed the 90-point mark again, <laughs> and, and it tough. just feels like, I mean, you watch it, Rafael, just – Seeing them in person, I, I mean, it's like a machine because it's just so hard to figure out what to do yeah. if you're on defense. They spread the floor with the shooters. They got they can run the break with Shannon. When they don't run the break, they can back you down with the mask. It, it just feels like somewhat impossible to defend. <laughs> they have everything you want on the offense. They have guys that can make shots. They got guys that can drive the ball. They got post-up guys. They got guys that can make decisions. Because you go to Madison, you go to Wisconsin – and you score 91 points, you run Wisconsin out of the gym, had Coach Beeline in the green room, just blowing his mind, not understanding what was going on, at the speed they were playing at, the pace they were going. It felt like Marcus Domas, it was his revenge game for Wisconsin not offering him out of high school because I, don't, I still don't understand how he wasn't offered by Wisconsin. No one, no one offered. How, no, wait a minute, no wait sense. a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. He almost went to Northern Kentucky. <laughs> Right? Like, Makes at sense. the last minute, he gets Makes an sense. offer from Southern Illinois. Somebody should have knew something. Makes sense. Because he, he was a... I'm right? just saying, you MVP can't just blame that on Wisconsin. You, I mean, somebody... Not Wisconsin, but well, you Wisconsin did, you who just he's talking said, about. How did Wisconsin Well, he gave Wisconsin him. 30 points. I understand. So in you hindsight, they should have offered him. In but hindsight, so yes. every other school in oh, the Big well, We're not talking about every other school right, in the Big Ten. We're right. talking about the school that had a chance. Because he was right there in their backyard. He was a freshman in high school. And he was the MVP of the state... Championship I understand. Game. There's the MVP of the state championship game in Indiana. I'm pretty sure that he gets the offer from Purdue, Indiana. I'm not blaming Greg Gard. I'm it not sounds like it you Greg. are. I'm say, I'm blaming everybody in Wisconsin. I'm blaming college basketball as a whole for allowing Marcus Domax, which he ended up being great for the Salukis, yes. but he went to Wisconsin and he was big time. It was bucket after bucket. He took Tyler Wall right to the woodshed. I like the idea that Coach Card, Card had by putting Tyler Wall on Marcus Domax, giving him a bigger defender, a longer defender, but it did not matter. 31 points, eight rebounds. Had it in whichever way. He was inside. He was making threes, getting to the free throw line. And then I thought Terrence Shannon had one of his better two-way games of the season. I gave him some slack defensively last week, but he stepped up. He took A.J. Stewart out of the basketball game. A.J. Stewart, 13 points, 4-12 from the field. Terrence Shannon showed not only why he's the best two-way player in the country, but he should, but for sure should be an All-American. He is impossible to stop. I mean, we saw more of that kind of downhill. But you're right. Obviously, on the defensive end, yep. he's really good as well. It's it's funny. In talking to Brad Underwood, actually, when I had one of their games earlier this year, he, he said something that really resonated with me. We were talking about the offense and how he's changed it. He said, last year, we led the nation – in contested threes with 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Mm, that's true. Right? That's yeah. And, <laughs> that's and true. to see, like, just how good this yes. offense is, how difficult it is to defend, you give a lot of credit to the players. And, again, For Damask sure. and 
Shannon and, and go on down the line, Hawkins, all these guys have really played well. But give some credit to Brad Underwood, oh, too. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I think, like, we have seen him change the way he plays so many times during his tenure at Illinois, and, yeah. and he just figures out ways, right? He Obviously, the defense, when he first got there, just did end up making yeah. sense for this league. He overhauled it. They've changed a ton of different times offensively based on their personnel. He's done an amazing job with this group. Yeah, I talked to Coach Underwood before this season. He said something. It was important for their locker room to get character over characters. And that's exactly what they did in the transfer portal. Of course, see Gary is a guy that came in, understanding he got to play hard, understanding that winning is important. Rather, he has five points in the game or 20 points in the game. He's got to play as hard as he can. And then Marcus Domask was the perfect fit yes. to go along with Terrence Shannon, a guy that's coming in that they want to be more aggressive, that will defer to Terrence, that will play his role. But I love what Coach Underwood has done offensively. He's let those guys go, but they have structure in their shot, in their shot attempts. When you talk about their shot selection, Coleman Hawk is at the point where He's shooting where he should be shooting. He's passing where he should be passing. And the growth with everybody on that roster has been really impressive. Let's talk about Wisconsin here. Seven losses in nine games. You shoot 50% yeah. at home against Illinois. You hold your own on the glass yeah. against one of the best rebounding teams in the country and yet just didn't have any answers on the defensive end. Again, not very many people do. I mean, Illinois is the most efficient offense in the country going back to February 1st. But still... You've lost seven of nine now. I, look, they're still going to be a tournament team because of all the work that they got done earlier in the year in November and December and January. But, man, since February 1st, it's, it's been rough going here. Yeah, they got to get some stops. And you hear a coach say it. They've got to get stops. And I liked when he put Max Klesman on Coleman Hawkins. It really took Coleman Hawkins out of the basketball games, made him less efficient from the field. But then you look at Marcus Domas. You got a guy go 12 or 21 from the field, 31 points. It was just easy for him. They had no resistance inside. That was the difference in the game. Because you look outside of Terrence and Marcus, other guys for Illinois struggle. Terrence got out in transition. He got made some open shots at the beginning of the game. But you can't let one guy, because that was the play in the second half. The second half was get Marcus Domas the basketball, give him some space, run some false action, and get him on the block. Because when he got on the block, one-on-one, -on -one, with whoever Wisconsin put on him, it was mouse in the house, it was barbecue chicken, it was bucket after bucket. They had no answer. For Wisconsin to turn this thing around, it's got to be on a defensive end. They can score with anybody, they can make shots, they take care of the basketball, they show they can rebound, but you can't give up 91 points in your home arena and expect to win. And you can't go to neutral sites in the NCAA tournament and give up 90, 95 points and expect to win those games. When they're at their best, they're getting stops on defense. They're making you shoot tough pull-ups. They're keeping you out of lane. They're not sending you to the free throw line. Wisconsin never sends teams to the free throw line 30 times in a basketball game. Illinois goes 24 for 30. That's the big difference in the game. It's got to be their defense. They put so much pressure on defense, as Illinois does. But I hear you. I, big big game against Rutgers at home. That's yes. like a game you, you gotta really got to win. Gotta win. Yes. And, and then they finish up with Purdue. <laughs> Speaking of Purdue, uh, good win for them. They win at least a share of the Big Ten. I love Michigan State played really well yeah. and hung with them for most of this game. Ultimately, though, there's just no answer for Zach Eady, right? Yes. And, I mean, Michigan State, man, they tried everyone <laughs> and everything, and it yes. just wasn't happening right there. Yeah, they sent the entire kitchen sink at them. I mean, it, they tried to stay one-on-one -on -one with Carson Cooper. You saw the double team come with Xavier Booker, Malik Hall. You saw them try to front the post. You saw them do everything that you could possibly do to a big fella. And it just didn't matter. 32 points, 11 rebounds, also four assists. So when he saw that double team, he was making good decisions out of it, creating offense for his team. Zach Eady just sees Michigan State. He sees that green. And he just doesn't like it. The last three games, he's averaged 34 points against the Spartans. They've had no answer for the big guy. So 26th Big Ten title for Purdue, the most all-time. They'll try to win it outright with a win this week. I do want to talk about Michigan State because – you know, look, we had Tom Izzo on last week. I, I, I don't think he was feeling great about his team <laughs> yes. when we spoke on Thursday. Yeah. I know it's Michigan State basketball, and I get it, and yeah. I get all the success he's had. Yeah. And I understand it's March, you know, January, February, Izzo. I mean, this is his <laughs> time of year, yes. right? And so I'm not in any way saying that Michigan State fans should be happy right. with losing a game, but man, this was a – better effort and I do think there are some things that you can take from it that were really positive 
not the least of which was they were right there and had a chance to win the game in the closing minutes. Yeah, they go on the road. You shoot 39% at a tough tough environment in Mackey Arena, and you only lose by six to a top three team in the country. That's got to give you confidence that if you just make shots, you make your layups, you're more efficient offensively, you win big games. But I like Michigan State. I like where they're at, actually. You look at Michigan State going into the NCAA tournament, maybe looking at a 10 seed. I trust Michigan State beating a 7 seed, maybe a 7 seed from a mid-major conference. I think they can get through that game. And then you get to a 2. I like Michigan State against some of the potential 2s, like a Marquette. They beat them last season. Not saying it will be the same, but I like A.J. Hogard in the matchup with Tyler Kolick. I like what their guards can do. I like Michigan State, but it's like you said. It's got to be continue playing hard, and then they're going to have to continue to make some shots. They needed more from Hogard and Walker, a combined 8 of 28 in this game. But again, like the way to hang around with Purdue and ultimately for the few teams that have beaten them this year, the way to beat them is kind of for them to have a little bit of an off night. Yep. Like Purdue did not have an off night. I mean, <laughs> they shot 50%. 50%. Braden Smith was great. Yes. Edie was over 30 points. Well, and so shot. to be there at the end on a day where some of your mainstays don't shoot the ball great, I think speaks volumes about the Spartans. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about Iowa trying to make a late season charge. They went into Evanston and did something that no other Big Ten team had done previously this year. Yep. Purdue didn't win there. Illinois didn't win there. Michigan State didn't win there. <laughs> Nebraska didn't win there. The Iowa won there. Yes, that's the, I mean, Josh Dix. Josh Dix, the last three games, has averaged 20 points a game. And then you think about when he was inserted into the lineup, they've exploded since offensively. And I love what Coach McCaffrey did. Had to be a tough decision to push Josh Dix in that lineup. But it, what it's done is given Iowa so much space offensively. Tony, Tony Perkins has exploded. He had 14 assists, two turnovers at Northwestern, and that's because of the space he's given with Josh Dix on one wing, with Payne Sanford on the other wing. I love this Iowa team. They have the best leadership in the Big Ten. I think Payne Sanford's the best leader in the conference. He had a phenomenal game, 23 points, 5 and 6. And then Ben Cricky, he distributed in that second half, got going. But I like this Iowa team because now they're starting to defend. It doesn't matter if they're making threes. They can get twos. It is not just up and down. They're switching up their defenses a little bit. Three quad one wins now for them. They have the enormous game coming up at home against Illinois. They have eight days yep. in between those games. And we know what Illinois has got, the big game against Purdue. So Iowa kind of lying in wait there. What do you make at Northwestern? I mean, mm. man, it is yes. – it's rough with the injuries right now. Ryan Langborg did not play. Chris Collins seemed to hint after the game that he'd be ready to yeah. go this week and kind of intimated that maybe he even could have been ready to go, but they want to make sure he was 100%. The issue is Matthew Nicholson now mm. went out with an injury. It did not look good. He did not come back to the bench. Yep. So you look at this now for Northwestern and, and just, you know, the bodies. I mean, they're running low on bodies. Yeah. And you look at but Matt Nicholson's number doesn't explain what he means to this team. I mean, he's great in the ball screen. Boo Booey coming off his ball screen, top of the key. He's an option at the rim that Boo can throw that lob to. Now teams are going to corral that ball screen. They're going to force the ball out of Boo's hand and force it into a three-pointer or whatnot. He rebounds the ball. He's a physical presence. He brings toughness inside. Losing Matthew Nicholson is going to be big time, especially with already Ty Berry being out. You're just going to put so much more pressure on guys like Brooks and Boo. And then when Ryan comes back, Nick Martinelli's going to have to be big time. But it's a thing where it's college basketball. You got guys like Luke Hunger and Preston and those guys. They add something different because you go back to that Purdue game when Northwestern beat Purdue at Welsh Ryan. Matt Nicholson played 10, 12 minutes in yeah. the game. And they had other guys step up and make shots at that position. So I won't say it's all the way over for Northwestern by any means. Other guys just have to step up. And then they do have the best point guard in college basketball. So I'll always get him a chance with Boo Booey. I think it's fair to say, look, Matthew Nicholson's a really important player. Um, losing Ty Berry was a, yeah. a, a massive, massive blow because they had to change the way that they play. Exactly. Yep. I don't think you change the way you play necessarily with Nicholson out, although you could make an argument. Do you go small? Do you put Martinelli at the five to mm. put a little bit less pressure on Luke Hunger. But remember, Luke Hunger started some games exactly. this year. There was a period of time where Matthew Nicholson was coming off the bench. I, I think there's some stuff to really like. You know, Blake Smith really played yes, well. He I did. mean, yes, really he did. well. So, right, yes. so you have a little bit of kind of found money yep. there with yep. someone that you weren't counting on at all, that you were going to red shirt, yep. who came on and, and played well. But it, it's rough. I mean, this team was so well constructed. Yes. You watch, like, that first eight minutes or whatever it was before Ty Berry got hurt against Nebraska. I'm like, man. Yes. 
Yes. They are clicking. Yes, they were. So we'll see, uh, you know, what, what happens here this week. They go to Michigan State, then they close at home against Minnesota. You probably need one more win yeah. to really feel good about the, the good NCAA about tournament. Uh, Nebraska's a great story, I, I think for sure. I said off the top, I think this team's going to dance. Yes. Uh, they played hard. They left no doubt <laughs> yes. against Rutgers. Yes. Rutgers never led in the game. And I just thought it was so emblematic of this team. Yes. Like Josiah Alec to mm. me is just everything that you want. He is the perfect grad transfer. Yes, he is. He's a guy who comes home to play for his hometown team. It matters to him. Yes. You know, if you saw the journey and you saw the, the story with his stepfather and a Nebraska football player, it's, yep. it's, it's really heartbreaking yes. in a lot of ways. But there are such deep connections there. And he just left everything on the floor, as did all these guys. I, just so happy for, for this whole crew. Yeah, like we were talking on Big Ten Beyond, and Josiah Alec, Coach Beanline, was saying he's a coach's dream, but I think he's a teammate's dream. You love teammates like Josiah Alec, dudes that are going to come to work every day, bring energy, not take energy from the locker room, give their all maximum effort, whether if it's a workout, it's a training session, conditioning, practice, a game, does not matter. Josiah Alec could play six minutes in a game, shoot the ball two times, He's going to play exactly as hard as he would if he had 20 points in the game and played 30 minutes. He gives his all, sets the tone for this team on both ends of the floor, gives his body up. And then Juwan Gary, he's been phenomenal the last few games, 15 points, 11 rebounds against Rutgers. What Nebraska did in those first four minutes of the basketball game, they just took the fight right to yes. Rutgers. They just punched them dead in the mouth because that's what happened in Piscataway. And when you got guys like Josiah Alec and Juwan Gary, they're not going to let that happen two times in a row. No, really, really impressive. Now they got a great chance to finish 12 and 8. Mm, they finish up crazy. on the road against Michigan. It, it really is. It is a wonderful mm -hmm. story. It's great that Nebraska stuck with Fred Hoiberg. Yes, it is. Right? I mean, this is a guy who he has shown us through the years. He knows how to win. It's hard. Yep. It's hard to go in right away and you start juggling the roster, and especially yeah. – in this day and age, we're relying heavily on transfers. It takes a while to get it right and to figure out what the right style is yep. in this league yep. versus the league that he was in previously in the Big 12, obviously NBA as well. But 18-1 and one at home. Yep. Didn't time. lose a single conference home game. Rewarded That's those crazy. fans. Really cool. Draymond Green, he's about to join the club. He's going to kiss the floor at half court. And Mateen Cleaves is Spartan royalty. Greg Kelser is Spartan royalty. And the fact that they took time to pay homage and salute him, that's amazing. That's what makes this whole Spartan thing special. If I'm not mistaken, we win that game, we win the outright Big Ten title. Down to Green for a three ball. He got it! Michigan State is on a major run. We had, I think, a 16-point lead in the game. And one of our key guys, Brandon Dawson, blew his knee, and he had done an incredible job on one of their best players, and the kid went off after that. William Buford and I, we signed with the same agent coming out of college. And he would not stop talking about the shot. He would not let me live the shot down that he hit. It spoiled my senior night. Buford, tough shot, canned it! Inside the arc for two with eight tenths of a second left. Wow. I'm still mad at him about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got us. He, he put a damper on that moment. If I'm not mistaken, that was the first time senior and I had been moved to after the game. That's a risk you take. You do it before the game and Everybody's fine. You're getting ready for the senior night. Oh, and we're going to win this game. Well, I took that moment in as a loser. It sucks to end it on that chapter. Can't wait to see that. Wednesday night, 6 Eastern time, preceding Michigan State against Northwestern. Big Ten standings as we head into the final week. Purdue and Illinois have both secured double buys in Minneapolis. Six teams behind them could finish with 11 or more wins, but as of now, Northwestern Nebraska, the final two, 
double buys. In terms of the battles for the single buys at the Target Center, Penn State, Rutgers, Maryland would join Michigan right now playing on Wednesday. Ohio State has the tiebreaker against the Nittany Lions by virtue of their win over Purdue. All right, so here's what it means for the bracket. Rutgers and Maryland, Michigan and Penn State are those Wednesday matchups. The two games that would be set for Thursday would be Indiana against Minnesota and Ohio State against Michigan State with Wisconsin and Iowa awaiting the Wednesday winners. Again, Purdue, Illinois, Northwestern, Nebraska would not start until Friday. I'm going to ask you the most open-ended question I possibly can. <laughs> so you can take this wherever you want to take it. Yeah. What interests you the most here heading down the stretch, final week? Ohio State. You look at Ohio State, what they've done over the last five games, the way they're playing for Coach Diebler, their defense has improved. Their guys are playing harder. They're playing more guys. They've opened up the bench. I mean, you look at how they won that game. They had 40 points off the bench. They're playing guys like Devin Royal, Scotty Middleton. Those young guys are starting to contribute. They're playing harder defensively. I look at where they're at right now in the Big Ten tournament with that 10, that 10 seed playing in Michigan State. They feel like they can beat a Michigan State. You get to that next game, you play at Illinois athletically. They match up with Illinois. They have the guys that could do it. Bruce Thornton, when he's his best, he's one of the best point guards in the Big Ten. A uh, hooked up Roddy Gale. He can compete with Terrence Shannon athletically. Roddy Gale is one of the only guys in the Big Ten athletically that could keep up with the Terrence Shannon. And then you think about who they play next. Maybe Northwestern, maybe Iowa. Ohio State could do some serious damage. Maryland and Rutgers. Whoever wins that game, you think about playing Wisconsin, playing Nebraska. What's bothered Wisconsin and Nebraska all season long has been length, athleticism, guys that can get up and down. So I like where the 10 seeds or the 12 and 13 seeds are. This could be a really interesting tournament. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I love to look at the numbers. As you know, Bart Torvik gives Ohio State a 9% chance of making the NCAA tournament, which isn't great. Still a chance. But it's better, right? I mean, it's better than the chance yes. I'm sure he was giving. I should look back at what it said a month ago. That's funny. It wasn't nine. Yes. It was probably like .009. <laughs> so it's a little better. And then Iowa, nearly 37% now. So to me, they become a really intriguing team. Yes. I talked about it before. But again, you get the whole week off yep. to prepare for a home game against Illinois yep. when you're going to have it everything in the world to play for it's not clear how much Illinois will have to play for depending on what happens to them against Purdue I think it sets up great here for Iowa to again are they going to make it I don't know whether they're going to make it again you're under 500 against the top two quads like there there are some things there that that are going to make it challenging right you're going to need to make a little bit of a run here but but man I think it sets up well for them next Sunday yeah I agree because you look at Illinois playing Purdue on Tuesday that's going to be such an emotional basketball game. Pr- Pr- Illinois is going to have a chance that they feel like if they beat Purdue and then they could feel like they could be co-champions of the Big Ten, but maybe they have an emotional letdown in that Iowa game. Maybe they don't show up. Maybe they expect to beat Iowa because they've already beaten Iowa at home, scored 95 points on them. And Iowa's a different animal out, out there at Iowa. I mean, they play harder in that gym. The fans are there. They're going to show up. They know what's on the line. So I can 100 proceed. 100% see Iowa taking care of business, beating Illinois, and then going into the tournament and winning some games because at Josh Dix, he's making some shots. Payne Sanford has got going. Tony Perkins has been unbelievable this season, really advanced his game. If Owen Freeman can be the Owen Freeman of a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago, being the dominant freshman that he is, I like where Iowa is. I like them being Illinois. They got time off to get guys healthy, get extra sauce up, watch some extra film. And then that game Tuesday is going to mean so much to Illinois that I worry about their emotional letdown after. Whether they win or whether they lose, I don't know how they're going to look at Iowa. And like you said, what are they going to be playing for? Yeah, I think that's going to be fascinating. I think they're a really interesting team this week. I think Michigan State's a really interesting team this week. Mm got to grab some momentum here, right? Three game. straight losses. We, we just sat here and praised how they played against Purdue, and, and with good reason. I think we both genuinely feel like they yeah. played well. But I got Northwestern at home, and then you go to Indiana. Like, you got to win one. I, I think maybe you have to win them both. I yeah. mean, not, not to make the tournament, but I'm just saying, like, to feel good. About to feel good. Yeah, especially you look at Northwestern. They're hobbled right now. You got to go out there. You got to get that win for sure. But that's Boo Booey senior night. Boo Booey's going to give them the game of his life. He's not going to want to let that happen. So I can see that being a really good game. And then that Indiana game, it can't really help them, but it can hurt them. It can hurt them in a yeah. bad way losing that game. So understanding what they're up against, 
They've got to go get both of these games, like you're saying, and especially that Indiana game on the road. They can't let that one slip away. Indiana playing well, yep. too. Yes, I mean, are. give them some credit, right? I, I'm always impressed by teams that don't have the season they expected to have and yet at the end are playing well, yeah. coming together. And we've seen that with Ohio State. We've seen it with Indiana a little bit. There are a few teams sprinkled here and there in the Big Ten where you say, man, this team has not folded up its tent yeah, I agree with that. When, when it would have been easy to do. It is time to go around the Big Ten where Caitlin Clark made history again this weekend, passing Pete Maravich as the NCAA's Division I all-time scoring leader in a 93-83 win over number 2 Ohio State on senior night. Clark got the 18 points she needed to pass Pistol Pete in the first half, finished with 35 points, 9 assists, 6 rebounds, Here's Clark post game with Allison Williams. Caitlin, your day began with a visit from your idol. You come out here, have a 35 point record setting performance, and get the win with your fellow seniors. What has this day been like for you? I thought we just came out and dominated. Honestly, I thought we played with a lot of energy. Even when Molly goes down, I thought Sydney stepped up. I thought Kylie gave us really good minutes. Um, I'm just proud of our girls. Obviously, five seniors that have been together for a long time, and you always want to send them out on the right note on their home court. So. It was a fun, dominant win for us. I thought we played really well. As you get ready to partake in your senior ceremony and kind of say your official goodbye to Hawkeye Nation, what are the emotions? Uh, I think just soaking it all in. Uh, luckily, we're probably going to have two more games here, which makes it a little less um, bitter. But, you know, I'm just very thankful for all these people that are going to stick around and support us and have supported us over the course of my four years. And um, it probably won't hit me until a little bit later, but just going to enjoy it with my family and my teammates and just really thankful to be in this place. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Clark and the Hawkeyes locked up the number two seed in the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament. Ohio State, which lost for the first time this calendar year, is the top seed. Indiana and Michigan State capturing the other two double buys for that tournament, which begins Wednesday. You can watch every game from Thursday to Saturday on the Big Ten Network in the Fox Sports app. Speaking of all-time leaders, Northwestern lacrosse star Izzy Skane broke the program record for career points in a 27-3 win over Central Michigan. Skane snagged her 398th career point on a goal midway through the first quarter. Congratulations to her, the defending national champs, off to a 5-1 and one start. On the ice, Michigan State captured its first-ever Big Ten hockey regular season title with a 5-2 win. At Wisconsin on Friday it was MSU's 22nd victory of the season, the most they've had since 2006 2007 when they won the national title. What a job Adam Nightingale's done his first two seasons at the helm in East Lansing. Gets us to our big stat is brought to you by Gatorade. Michigan State now the sixth team to win the Big Ten hockey regular season. Amazingly, Michigan is now the only team in the conference that hasn't done it. Spartans were picked to finish third in the preseason. It's the first time they've had a winning record overall in nine years. Uh, Paul Caponigri <laughs> is here. First of all, that Michigan thing is crazy yes. when you consider they, it. how they great. They have some playoff ones. I understood. the last two. I understood, right? Yes. They've been the last it, two it, frozen it fours. and They, they peaked uh, yeah. at the right time. No, I get it. I get it. I, I mean, I'm, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it, right. it, it was a little surprising it, to me. For sure. But let's talk about Michigan State. Yes. Yeah, put in perspective for us the job Adam Nightingale has done and kind of this turnaround for this program. What what? Yeah. Like when you think about where they were a couple of years ago and where they are now. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned to you off cam uh, two years ago, nine years into Big Ten play, they had not won a playoff game, not a series, anything in nine years. Now, a lot of times there was one and done. So, you know, it's, it wasn't drastic. But to go from that to where they were on Friday night, you know, hoisting that trophy, you know, in Madison in less than two in two years, hockey can be finicky that way. He, Adam did a great job the first year. He brought in more talent this year, and now you're seeing what he's doing with that talent in such a short time. It's pretty crazy, too. I, I, you, chemistry is so hard. And I think yeah. one of the things that's really... 15 new players this year. Yeah, 15. that's that's kind of what I was getting at, yeah. right? To, to do it in the degree that they have turned over the roster, yeah. do some with the youth, some out of the portal. Sure. You have the youngest goalie in the country. I mean, it, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, he found, I mean, he got the right guys. I think, like you said, I think he's got, he's a good recruiter, clearly. I mean, yeah. with the young guys and then also in the transfer portal because, you know, when you're bringing in that many guys, I mean, what are you selling? Are you selling, hey, you're going to get an opportunity, but then there's seven or eight other guys. 
that you're telling the same thing. I think he just gives a really good message, and they clearly have bought in. Um, different guys are doing every night. The Friday night here was Reed Lebster, who had a good year, but not a terrific one. But he made two great plays, and bang, they are the champions. Um, and they're just that's what there was, their depth. They didn't rely on one, two guys. They relied on seven, eight, nine, ten, and it helped them every night. There was a different hero. Awaken the sleeping giant, right? I mean, this I is mean, back great. to when I was playing, yeah. when they had Ryan Miller in Three goal, and you couldn't score goals on them, right. and you know they're back. Yeah. yeah. And ironically, they're the last one to win a national championship with Big Ten team. First time they will have even been in the NCAA tournament since 2012. Remember, the significance of winning the regular season for them is that they're the only school that doesn't have to play in the first round. These are best of threes. These are the matchups they start Friday. Wisconsin, the second seed, they'll battle Ohio State. That's on Big Ten Plus, as is Michigan, Notre Dame. Minnesota, Penn State's on FS2. Cappy's going to be on the call there, so yep. let's run through a few of these. Let's start with the Wolverines and the Irish. Yep. Correct in saying Notre Dame has to win the Big Ten tourney to make the NCAA tourney, yes? Yes. Okay. The, the only four that don't would be Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and uh, Minnesota. Okay. Um, yeah, so Notre Dame does, and, and, and Ryan Bischel is their hope. He's I arguably been the best goalie the last two years. He was the Big Ten goalie of the year last year. Two weeks ago was their last games at Michigan. He did not play great. He played okay, but he gave up a couple goals where if they want to win the playoffs, he can't give those up. And the reason he came back, we talked to him earlier in the year, is to get to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. So it's on his shoulders. You know, he the, has the most control of any player out there of how well Notre Dame does. It's much like a quarterback in, in football. Uh, interesting that they will be playing – with a week off, so be yeah. Know, we'll see. To see rest if that versus helps rust. Them. Right, yes. right. Helps helps their legs a little bit. What about the series you're calling? Gophers and Nittany Lions. Yeah. Minnesota trying to enhance its NCAA tourney standing. We know they're in. Yep. But this could certainly help you if if you win a couple series here. Yeah, I think if they can, they would probably run the table to get to the final. Win that, beat Michigan or Mich or Michigan State or Wisconsin. They possibly could bump up to a number one seed. I think they you know need a little yeah. help too. Um, but they, this team, they played Penn State about a month ago, didn't give up a goal in the series at Mariucci. You know, Penn State just won their first road games last weekend at Ohio State in, in, since November. So that should give them a little mojo, but they're obviously playing a different animal in Minnesota. Um, so Liam Soulier, last kick of the can as a senior. If he can play well in net, Penn State, you know, they just need some bounces. Hockey's that way. Right. If the goalie gets hot – they can win a game, and then you never know. If you can get it to a third game, I think Penn State would love that opportunity of a one-game Sunday matchup. does feel like Minnesota is peaking they at the right time. They played a great second half. Uh, lost just four of their last 16. Yeah. What about Ohio State and Wisconsin Badgers? Yes. Miss out on the title in part because they got swept by the Buckeyes. Just two weeks of, ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Now now we're in Madison here. Right. So that's a little bit different, but, but yes. give us the lay <laughs> of the land on this one. Uh, you know, Wisconsin's the number one defensive team in the Big Ten, and the Buckeyes are the least offensive team in the Big Ten. So, you know, the, the Buckeyes' only chance is to get off to a good start and get the first goal in a game and get some confidence. They, they have some injuries, too, which is going to put them down. Um, but it's going to be a tough road to hoe for them. In Wisconsin, they swept them early. You know, the Badgers won both games. So, tough battle for my Buckeyes. I, it's, it's, you know, it's just not a, a great year for them, but they're going to go in there and fight. But I, I, the Badgers are probably the team that are going to come out of that. Yeah, one. didn't just sweep them at the Kohl Center 9-1 to one yeah, between the two games. So, no, there's, there's some dominance there. And, yeah. and it's interesting, right, like I know Wisconsin's disappointed coming out of the weekend right. because he didn't win the – Big Ten title. But, but another but they, big but, turnaround. Yeah, and they, and they got the win in the second game, right? So so you get a little and, bit of And they're fighting for their number one seed in the right. NCAA tournament. Big right. fish there. All right, this should be fun. Enjoy the tournament. Have fun in Minneapolis. I will. It's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff happening. going on. Yeah, yeah. The Big Ten Wrestling Championships coming at you this weekend. The action begins Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern. It picks up Sunday at 4.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. It's like Shane's Christmas, right? <laughs> I mean, no one enjoys that more than Shane Sparks. He is here to talk about it with us. Uh, we're talking about the conference that has won the last 16 straight national titles. So when you talk about the Big Ten Wrestling Championships, I mean, I understand you still have the NCAAs and everyone wants to be a national champ. But, man, there is something to be said 
for winning this league. I've always said this, Dave. You can't go down to the grocery store and buy one of these things off the shelf. You have got to earn it. This is why you come to the Big Ten. It's the nation's premier wrestling conference. This is why you do it. You get the best competition in the country. And this weekend, the rubber hits the road. Bring the big boy pants if you want to stand atop the podium in Maryland. Okay, so let's dive into this. Again, we're going to have the seed reveal. That happens later today, 7 Eastern on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. You and Rick will go through that. But let's go through some of these weight classes and, and just give people a sense of kind of what's at stake here. 125 is amazing. You've got four of the top five <laughs> ranked wrestlers in the country. Am I reading that right? Four of the in top one, five. In, in one weight class in one league. That is exactly yeah. it. Four of five. And when you look at it, Matt Ramos of Purdue, couple of early season losses, but he has been fantastic for Tony Ursland. Of course, last year made the national final. He pinned Spencer Lee yes. in the semifinals. So he got off to a little bit of a slow start, maybe to his standards, but he's been really, really good. He's beaten Drake Ayala of Iowa. He's beaten Patrick McKee of Minnesota. He's beaten Eric Burnett of Wisconsin. Barnett, All-American. McKee, All-American. Drake Ayala from Iowa ranks second in the country. He's very, very good. Just so many really good guys, and I have not even mentioned the true freshman, Brayden Davis from Penn State, he has been spectacular. So it's one of these things, Dave, you got to find a way to navigate a few matches, and it's got to be, it's the old cliche, but it is so true. It's one match at a time. It almost feels like it's every bit as big an accomplishment when a weight class is that loaded, right, to win the Big Ten, almost as it is to win the national title. It, it, it's amazing. All right, so let's dive into 141 which is also similarly loaded. I mean, not quite. It's not four of five, right? But it's, it's one, it's, two, three. It's the top three. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's nuts. One, two, yeah. three, five of ten in this weight class. Bo Bartlett is undefeated from Penn State. He was third in the country a year ago. And again, he's beaten the really good guys. He's beaten Jesse Mendes of Ohio State. Really close match. He beat Real Woods of Iowa, who is the reigning Big Ten champion. And then he also has uh, a couple other wins. Brock Hardy comes to mind from Nebraska. That was a close one. So again, it's just, it's so tough to, you know, make predictions on these things because a lot of times it's it's a one position match. It's who can get that takedown yeah. in that first period, who can maybe get the ride out. Those are the things that really set the tone. But Bo Bartlett, he's had some close matches, but the bottom line with him is he finds a way to win. He's been very consistent. I'm looking forward to a, a, a possible matchup that we have not seen in the regular season that we might see at the Big Ten Championships in Jesse Mendez and Real Woods. That'd be a fun match to watch. Uh, so again, loaded there. You have guys who finished second and third in the nation last year again in in the same weight class in the same <laughs> conference. Uh, 157, Levi Haynes won it as a freshman last year, but it's not going to be easy to repeat here. Levi Haynes is the reigning Big Ten champion, the 2023 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. National finalist fell to Austin O'Connor of North Carolina last March in Tulsa. This weight class, Dave, allow me, I got to check my notes because there's too many names. Yeah. You got Levi Haynes, you got Michael Blockus of Minnesota. He's been fantastic. He was an All-American last year at 149, now up to 157. Jared Frannick of Iowa came over from North Dakota State. He was a Big 12 champion. Peyton Robb, he was a Big Ten finalist, fell to Levi Haynes last year, multiple time All American. He's in this weight class. Will Luan's an All American. He's in this weight class. Brayton Lee's an All American from Indiana. He's in this weight class. 157 pounds in the quarterfinals. It's going to get very, very interesting. A lot of times you look at these tournaments and you go, okay, pretty good idea that these are going to be the semis, and yeah, maybe this is how it all shakes out. Right away, opening whistle at 157, and I didn't even mention a guy like Joey Blaze from Purdue or Trevor Chumbly of Northwestern. Those two guys are very, very good wrestlers. 157 pounds is 10 deep. Wow. And I didn't even say Chase Saldate. How could I forget about him? I was going to say Chase that. Saldate of Michigan <laughs> State is an absolute beast. 157 pounds. You win the Big Ten at 157. I can promise you this, Dave. Yeah. When they zoom in on the camera, at the champion at 157, his face is going to show what kind of battle it had been for him on his way to the top. So let's dive into 165. And I think that one is, is interesting because you have a fairly clear-cut one and two. I mean, is that a fair assessment? 165, yeah. Dean Hamity, the yeah. reigning Big Ten champion from Wisconsin. But Penn State's got this redshirt freshman. Mitchell Messenbring scores a ton of points, just like Hamity. These guys, Dave, I've said this before. 
at 165, when you see a guy like Mitchell Messenbrink or Dean Hamity or Michael Caliendo from Iowa can light up the scoreboard, the scoreboards, if you zoom in on the scoreboards, you actually see him move and go, the scoreboard's going to take a deep <laughs> breath because they know what they're going to be in for for the next seven minutes. It's a lot of scoring. It's exciting. It's a weight class people will not want to miss. Uh, there is an injury issue I want to ask you about. Carter Starachi at 174. What's the latest on his health? Do you have any sense as we head in here, we're talking about a guy who is a multi-time national champion. Three-time national champion, Davey, has won 64 straight going for his fourth individual national title. Have not heard much. They've kept it pretty quiet at Penn State. He appeared to suffer a, a leg injury last week against Edinburgh. Here's the situation. There's more of an emphasis on the conference tournaments with the NCA this year. So he has got to take the mat twice. That might be, perhaps... He shows now, up. No, what do you mean he's got to take it twice in order to get into the NCAA? He's got to take the mat twice. So what he could do, wow. an option would be that he comes out there for a second and then they injury default and then he does it again. But that okay. would count as two losses and would affect the seat at the national tournament. Wow. We'll see how this plays out. It is definitely, I believe, the biggest storyline of the tournament from an individual standpoint. We'll certainly wish him the best again. Absolutely. Penn State, we know great. how dominant they've been and he is. He is a force of nature. Yes, he is. He is really. <laughs> Speaking of forces of nature, Shane Sparks, again, 7 Eastern time with Rick Pizzo. It's going to be informative. It's going to be entertaining. There will be some energy. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for giving us a few Dave, minutes. Dave, always appreciate it. Yeah. Before it's all said that, I'm getting you and I'm getting Rick Pizzo to a Big Ten tournament. I think next year it might be at Northwestern. i got to get you there. Really? I've got good proximity to Northwestern. Uh, you would love it. Yeah. You would love it. Yeah, I can, I can make it there. Uh, awesome stuff, as always. Thanks thank for, you. Thank you very much. And, and again, we'll be watching later today. The dramatic conclusion of our show is next. Ray Fell is back with me as we get you set for the biggest showdown of the final week of the regular season, Illinois and Purdue tomorrow night. If it feels like Purdue and Illinois are two of the better Big Ten offenses we've seen in a while, that's because they are. These are the top five teams here in terms of points per possession in the Big Ten this century. The Boilers are the second best. Illinois is third. They're both trailing only the Wisconsin team from 2015 that, as you'll recall, played for a national championship. And we get to watch them. Head to head <laughs> yes. tomorrow in Champaign. I, I, I'd be surprised if this one ends in the 60s. <laughs> right? I, I don't think yes. that's going to happen in this game. I, it's it's going to be a ton of fun. Yep. This is one of the games of the year in the Big Ten. In fact, I'd argue maybe it is. I mean, these are the, the two best teams, and the yep. first time they played in, in West Lafayette, Terrence Shannon Jr. didn't play. So, yes. so maybe it is the game of the year. What are you watching here? I mean, this feels like the Super Bowl of the Big Ten season. It feels like the Big Ten regular season conference championship. I'm watching can Purdue keep Terrence Shannon out of transition because Matt Painter, he loves to send three guys, sometimes four guys to the glass, have one guy get back. And one guy getting back, Fletcher Lawyer, that's not enough for Terrence Shannon in transition. So I want to see how he adjusts his defensive strategy. But in this game with great offense, you're going to need some stops. Somebody's going to have to dig in and whoever gets the most kills. And what I mean by kills is – Three stops in a row. Whoever gets the most three stops in a row segments, I think that's going to be the winner of the game. Purdue is a vastly better defense in Illinois. I mean, we look, I'm not in any way, like, I get Illinois winning, yeah. but they are last in the Big Ten in defensive efficiency since yes. February 1st. Dead last. Yep. So you wonder, like, do uh, again, they're going to score a ton, yep. but can they stop Purdue I in mean, any meaningful sort of way? They're going to have to. They're going to have yeah. to send the double team Zach Eady. They're going to have to be aggressive with Purdue's guards, push them out, because they're going to have to win this game defensively because Purdue's going to try and shorten the game, make it a half court basketball game, and not let them get in transition. Trent Meacham's going to be here to preview it with me tomorrow, and then I'm guessing he's hightailing the back <laughs> yes. out I 57, right? Shimmy Gray Miller here as well tomorrow. We got the women's all conference teams.